My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, my name is Anna Henke. I'm the resident writer in business. I'm a copywriter, copy consultant, and writing coach. And I'm tuning in from Minnesota. I'm from the Minneapolis area. Awesome, awesome. So you guys don't say soda. You guys say pops, right? We do say pop here, yes. So can you explain <laughs> that to people? Because a lot of people don't know. That's What's like that? one of the weird things you guys do. <laughs> we, we do say pop. I don't know. You know, I grew up kind of saying it interchangeably, but most people say pop. That's crazy. So <laughs> I had, I hope my wife is not watching this video. One of my girlfriends in the past, when we were going, she was from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So she came down and we went to a restaurant. She's like, yeah, can I get a pop? What the hell is a pop? So I'm just <laughs> thinking maybe it's a type of food. And, I, you know, I didn't want to look bad, you know, saying that I don't know what it is. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, pop, what is pop? What is pop? I thought it was type of a French fries or, or somehow you cook something different oh, no. that you call a pop. I was like, what is a pop? I'm like, what are you looking for? She's like, pop. Just, I'll take your pop. I'm like, I have no idea what that is. She's like, I just don't <laughs> That's it. So, anyways, a lot of people don't know how you all do it differently. Um, it's all good. It's all good. So, listen, I've been looking forward to this interview for a minute because I think copywriting is a very unique set of skills. So, tell us what is copywriting? How did you get involved? Because a lot of people don't know. Yeah, so copywriting, I've been doing copywriting for over eight years. Um, so I've been doing it for a hot minute. Um, copywriting is, um, there's a, it's a little bit of a distinction between copywriting and content. So I will, I will distinguish those two for you. Copywriting is any kind of copywriting that you do in your business that has to do with sales. It's the, the copy, the, the text that goes on your website and your product descriptions, anything like that where you're driving sales, you're driving people to press that buy button. Um, content, on the other hand, is anything that you post on social media that you do for brand building, anything like that where you're trying to build awareness. So those are the kind of distinctions that not a lot of people realize between those two words. I actually do both, um, but some people specialize in either of those areas, but just a little bit of a, um, a little distinction between those three. So, is it, so if you're a copywriter, do you need to understand sales or do you need to understand psychology of sales? You, you really need to understand both in order to do it well. Um, so I've actually spent time in retail. I've, I've done a lot of marketing. So um, in order to be really successful, you have to know that psychology behind sales. And you need to understand um, also like the sales part of, of web content, where to put the buy button, that kind of stuff. You have to know all those different things in order to, to really be successful with your content. Um, Which and, are things that I'm, I'm clueless. Of, of how it is so yeah, we'll let the professionals things. and then you have like the seo component too where you're usually working with someone with that um keywords are very important so there's a lot of different pieces that go into copywriting which makes it fascinating okay so can a copywriter be also a writer um yes absolutely i i am both um, I have I have published a couple of books, um, so I I do I kind of dabble in all areas of writing. But in my in my day job and in my business, I'm I'm a copywriter and a content um, person. Um, but I also write fiction. So I I can and my degree my um, I actually have a bachelor's degree in literature. So um, I'm kind of like <laughs> all over the map when it comes to writing. Um, but it's it's definitely it's, it's a, a fascinating very world. Writing. It's a Very fascinating different. world because um, when I got introduced to it, it was like three years ago, and mm -hmm. I didn't even know what copywriting was. So mm -hmm. someone said copywriting. I'm like, you mean someone is copying your stuff? Like, I thought it yeah. was like an assistant. You give them something, and they go make copies of it. I was like, what is copywriting? And they're yeah. like, no, no, the text that goes in there, this is what we do. I was like, oh, isn't that just sales? Don't you just write it? They're mm -hmm. like, yeah, but the sales guy suck at putting into words he could say it, but he doesn't know how to put it into words. Yeah. I was like, like so the guy's handicapped. He can't do that part. So we got to, mm -hmm. so now we got to bring somebody else to help the sales guy do all that mm -hmm. stuff. It's so funny. The question that I get all the time is, do I do the legal kind of copywriting? Like copywriting that's C-O-P-Y-R-I-G-H-T, like copywriting a book. 
which is a totally different thing than what I do because I do the you know the other the, the actual writing part so it's it's a very confusing thing and it is it's something that people wonder about and they're like you know what exactly is it um but I do want to go back to kind of how you were saying like can a copywriter be a writer and I do want to just kind of make a connection there I see I see all copy as essentially storytelling. Um, you're making a connection with the audience. You're making that connection with the audience. You're, you're forming that, um, that identifier. Like you want the reader to say like, oh, that's me as the client or the customer. And then you're telling the transformation story of them through the product or service of what they're gonna get. So whereas in a fiction book or a nonfiction book, the nonfiction book, you're also telling a transformation story. It's, it's a self-development story. It's the story of um, uh, any kind of nonfiction book. In a fiction book, you're telling the story of a hero's journey, anything like that. Um, I see all copywriting as storytelling in a sense. You're, you're telling a story that inspires them to buy. So I do see a connection and people like Donald Miller, they see that connection as well. He's the story brand guy. Um, so that's my so, point. Okay. So here's my question. My understanding for sales was that if you give them the facts and the features and the benefits of a product, they should buy it. But I'm finding out that that is not the case. That I believe you have to give them more than that. I give, I give all my people more than that. When I do copy for someone, I believe you, you at the very least have to go to, for the benefit of the benefit. So features and benefits is one thing. If you don't at least give them the benefit of the benefits, which is, well, the benefits are one thing, but what do they get as a result of that benefit? So let's say the benefit is you get more money. What can you do with that more money? What is this client, this ideal client? Let's say it's a mom of two. What does she really want to do with that money? Does she want to go on a weekend trip with her girlfriends? Does she want to go on a date night with her husband? Like, I put very specific things in my copy. Like, for my um, freelance clients where I do um, website work, well, I, I write a lot of copy for coaches, for example, um, things like that. So I will get very specific with the benefit of the benefit and put out things that people are going to actually say, oh, yeah, that's actually, that is actually what I want to do. So they'll identify personally. And it just forms that, that, um, that extra layer of like, yes, that's what I want, you know? Get so I don't know what you're doing in Minnesota. Why are you in Minnesota? <laughs> Why are you in Minnesota? I don't even know the population of Minnesota. But it sure as hell is not as big as California. What are you, you know, doing? I all over the world actually um i do i i have a business online and um i i have served clients in new zealand i have served clients in germany england so i don't discriminate by location <laughs> love it love it love it awesome so here's my other question for you generally speaking when individuals want to do something or they have how do we get to the raw draft do you have the coaches write what they want and then you go back over it? Or is it something that you're having a conversation with them? Because I feel like the fact that I need to type it is more difficult. Having a conversation maybe is better for the copywriter to pull the content out of me. I completely agree. So my process is I, how I work with people is I have an initial discovery call where we decide if we're a good fit. If we click, if, 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 if um, that person feels like I'm a good fit, that, you know, we can, we can jive on that. Then what happens is I send them a detailed questionnaire. That questionnaire includes questions about their brand. It includes questions about their offer, um, about their, if we're doing a website, about their, what they want on their about page, things like that. Then we have a call. Like you said, we have a call. We go over the questionnaire. I ask more details. I record that call, not only so that I can have that information, but also so that I can record things like their tone, their, the way that they speak, so that when I am doing their website or when I'm doing their copy, I can really make their brand voice authentic so that when they continue that on their social media, it's that brand voice is very authentic and continues that. Um, and it just, it feels very cohesive. That's one of my strategies because I want, 
I want them to be able to take whatever I write for them and utilize that and just move forward in their business. So yes, I do believe the best way to do it, because it is hard for those business owners to sit down. The reason they're hiring me, the reason they're hiring any copywriter is because they're having a hard time doing it. They can't do it. So yes, I do. I have them fill out a questionnaire. Then I talk through it with them. I do the work. I do the writing work. We go through the draft. You know, if, if there's changes that need to be made, we do edits, we do changes, we do reworks until they're completely satisfied. <laughs> yeah, with your eight years of experience, I'm not checking it. I'm just posting it. Yeah. That's it. What you do is already good. I love it. Okay, so here's my other question for you. Can I get inspiration from the things that I've seen online also too? Or everything has to be brand new, created out of the the my out of the blue? Can I get inspiration from others? Because I feel like a lot of times, like I like a segment of people, what they've done. Like I'm all like, this resonates really good with me. Can I get inspiration from those? I think you can take inspiration from everywhere. Um, I certainly do. The, the thing that I really believe in, and I've already hinted at this, is brand voice in making things yours. So you might take inspiration from something that someone else is doing, but then how can you spin that? How can you, um, how can you put your own story into it? How can, you, um, how can you convey it in your voice using your own unique experiences to, um, to maybe use the initial kernel of an idea that you like, that you thought was effective, but then use it for your brand in a way that works for you. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So here's my other question. Now, why is it important that that tone or, or, or the brand identity to be throughout the whole entire process? I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, like I had a hard time understanding. I was like, I'm unique. Every day is a unique day. Why do we got to have something that we created four years ago and continue doing that? I, I, was, I was having a hard time with it. I was like, why can't we be unique every day? But then I also realized that was very confusing too. So, Well, first I want to clarify, I have nothing against developing. So if, if you're not the same as you were four years ago, that's a good thing. Because you should develop as a brand. You should move upwards. I mean, onwards and upwards, always. But in terms of taking on a different voice every day, it's an authenticity thing. It's in so people can trust who you are and know who you are. Um, if you are showing up in a different way every single day, and if you are, people aren't going to know who you are. People aren't going to know what you stand for. People aren't going to um, be able to pick you out of a crowd. You want to show up in a way that is genuine, is authentic to you so that people can really um, say, yeah, that's what she's about or that's what he's about, that's what they're about and represent yourself in a way that's continuous and cohesive. And that's what a good brand does. Mm -hmm. so, so now, so, so with that conclusion, branding and marketing are different. They are, uh, in my opinion, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a brand would be a voice that, I mean, you could campaign different marketing. So, okay, because I think a lot of entrepreneurs are confused with that. A lot of times mm -hmm. what you do as a brand might be a little bit different or you have to alter it because now you're doing a campaign, which is marketing. So to yeah, me, it's like- marketing campaigns, marketing campaigns are advertising and you are gonna have different advertising campaigns. You are gonna have different products. Your branding is your foundation. And that's, those are your core values. Those are, um, that, that's stuff that doesn't really change in my, and this is of course my philosophy. I mean, anybody can have their own philosophy, but that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So my other question is this, you mentioned it already, story, storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as a human race, we connect to that. I think it's part of our identity as when people explain stories is different. Like I tell you an example how I realized the storytelling was good because when I show pictures of me going to different, you know, islands in Hawaii, when I show a picture, they're like, okay, it's one picture is cool. But people could get that at a postcard and they could get it online with even better, higher resolution than my camera. But when I put a story behind it and I say why I did, what I did in that location mm -hmm. or how I found that location. When I'm giving a story, 
Now when they look at that picture, it's got a lot more meaning. So how do we do that for our business? Yeah, the stories, the stories are what make us people are. That's what people care about. So the thing is with business, products and services are pretty similar across the board that people offer. I mean, at the end of the day, there are a lot of coaches. There are a lot of um, online businesses that do very similar things. People hire people. And that's why stories matter. So you um, let people get to know you, let people get to know your brand. Telling stories is how you do that. Telling stories is how you share your philosophy. It's how you share um, what working with you is going to be like, because it shows your personality. It shows what you value. It shows um, what you like, what you are about, what you, what you maybe stand for, what you don't stand for. It shows... Um, it shows what having a conversation with you is like. And people, people, that's what people hire you for, you know? And people hire you because they like you. I mean, it's the no like and trust factor that everybody always talks about. And that's why storytelling matters so much in business, especially um, for um, service-based entrepreneurs, um, where people are hiring basically you for a one-on-one -on -one service. Um, that is where it really matters most. I agree. You know, sometimes I get these emails and it's so weird. I was talking to one of my buddies about it is that I get the email and it's like, I can feel that the person is on the other side and I'm reading. I don't know how to explain. It's a conversational mm -hmm. writing. It's not the academic writing or copy. And, and you respond well to that, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm reading and I'm going. And here's the funny part. Because the sentences are not full long, like it's not paragraphs. It's like small lines and we're, we're having this conversation and I noticed myself reading an email that had nothing to do with me. I was just, I, I, there was no reason for me to read that email. But I was like, let me see where it goes. Let me see what's going on. And it had nothing to do with me, but I ended up reading the email. Yeah. And I'm like, this is crazy. I was reading this whole entire email, but I was going with the flow. Well, and that's one of the secrets of good content and copywriting. Do not write it like a five paragraph essay. Write it like you're having a conversation with the person. You don't have to write in full sentences. You don't have to write in perfect grammar. You just, just write it like you're talking to somebody. And that is what people like. That is what people um, respond best to because it feels real, you know, it feels authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And that's, and I think those people, are very talented because I would never be able to put something like that. Like for life of me, I'd be sitting there all day long thinking, maybe I could just voice record it and then write it as if we're having a conversation. But I think that's a cool skill to have because mm -hmm. I mean, to me, a business owner or entrepreneur could do everything right. But if you can't put it in words and explain it to somebody, that's going to hinder yourself. That's yeah. going to jeopardize the entire business because you're not, you don't have that skills and nobody expects you to have those skills. You got to get help in that. So who needs to come to you and how do they find you? Um, well, I, I help people in all industries, really. I've worked from wedding planning to business coaching to, I mean, you name it, I've done it. I'm handmade people on Etsy. Um, um, I, you can find me at The Resident Writer on all platforms. Um, um, my, my website is theresidentwriter.com. And um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and it's been such a delight to speak with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. Thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule, Brenda. We'll definitely be in touch. I know a lot of uh, handicapped coaches that need your help. Uh, oh, I think yeah. they definitely need to, they definitely, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go rave about you. I'm going to say, listen, just don't say nothing. Just contact this person. <laughs> She'll make magic for you. And that's what, that's how I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to say she could do magic for you. You need <laughs> help you. because I've seen your content. You need help. So I, I'll, you know, they won't take it personal coming from me. So I, I have that relationship. I'm like your content, your emails. Just go to her. She'll take care of it. So that would well, be I appreciate that. Definitely stay safe in Minnesota. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Take care.